Hey everyone, ever feel like that introduce yourself part in job interviews is like make or break, you know, that moment <laughs> where everything's on the line? Well, today we are diving into this career vids YouTube video. And let me tell you, it's like finding a cheat code, but for acing those intros. We're not just talking surviving, we're talking memorable. It really is true, that first impression, it sets the tone for everything that follows. Oh, absolutely. Think of it less like, you know, reciting your resume and more like you're setting the stage. You're framing your story, why you are the perfect casting choice for their movie. Okay, love that. So it's about more than just, I went to this school and then I had this job, right? Exactly. We need to ditch those kind of generic responses and really zero in on what's going to resonate with those hiring managers. So what, like, what makes them sit up and take notice? Professionalism is key. So that means, you know, skip the personal life stories. They don't need your whole life's history. Yeah, no oversharing. Exactly. Yeah. Unless, of course, it's directly related to the job. Yeah. You know, like you're applying to be a marine biologist and you've got this amazing goldfish collection, then maybe. Mm. But otherwise, no. Right. Like, this is why I'm meant to take care of your dolphins. Okay. So <laughs> what else? What other kind of, like, pitfalls should we avoid? So health details, also a big no-no unless you are legally required to disclose something and it directly impacts the job. Yeah, makes sense. Your health is important, but it's probably not the best first impression. Exactly. And then finally, this is a big one. Negativity about past employers, really important to avoid. Oh, absolutely. Nobody wants to hear you badmouth your old boss that just screams future headache. Uh exactly. <laughs> this is not a therapy session. This is a job interview. It's like that saying, you're not defined by your past, but you are informed by it. So how do we take all that, all those experiences and actually make them work for us in that intro? That's where things get really interesting. And CareerVids actually had a couple of different instructions that they recommended. Oh, okay. Lay it on us because I am ready to take notes. So the first one is the BEST acronym. And it's interesting because, you know, just saying a list of skills, it could be kind of boring, right? But the BEST method, it takes those skills and it turns them into a story. Okay, I'm already intrigued. Tell me more about this BEST approach. What does it stand for? So BEST stands for Background, Experience, Successes, and Traits. And again, it's about showcasing your qualifications in a way that directly relates to that specific job you're going for. So instead of just being like, here's a laundry list of all the places I've worked, we're really like strategically highlighting the things that are gonna grab their attention. Exactly, hitting those key points right from the get-go, piquing their interest so they want to learn more throughout the interview. Okay, so walk us through this. What does a BEST introduction actually sound like in action? All right, so let's say you're applying for a marketing position, right? A BEST introduction might start with your educational background in marketing. Then you'd seamlessly transition into your experience, perhaps highlighting a successful campaign you spearheaded. And this is where we bring in those impressive numbers, right? Like increased website traffic by 200% something that makes their ears perk up. Exactly. Quantifiable achievements, those are gold. Then you would move on to your relevant traits, emphasizing things like creativity, communication, analytical thinking, you know, those crucial skills for marketing. And don't forget those action verbs. Got it. So instead of I was responsible for, it's I spearheaded or I collaborated, you know, make those accomplishments really pop. You got it. Now, CareerVids actually offered a sample BEST response to kind of demonstrate how effective this structure can be. Want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so they suggest saying something like this. Thank you for this opportunity. I graduated from your college with good qualifications in insert the subjects. Okay, simple, to the point. I like it. Right, and it keeps going. Since my education, I've continued my development and have successfully completed courses in Microsoft Office applications, health and safety, and customer service. I have experience working on small and large teams, delivering on time-sensitive projects, and using data and analytics to solve challenges and drive business growth. Okay, so far so good. They've covered their background, their experience working in teams, even how they use data to achieve results. See, it's concise, but it's impactful. Yeah. And it keeps going. I am a high achiever in my last position at Company X. I was praised during performance reviews for how I took the lead during challenges and brought creative ideas to the team to help increase sales. My best traits will add value to your team. I am flexible with my job description, always embrace change with a positive attitude, and have exceptional time management and organizational capabilities. For example, I have created a 30, 60, 90-day plan of action that explains what I will do in this role if you hire me. 
I have brought my plan to the interview and would like to give you a copy. Wow. Okay. That's a lot to unpack, but it didn't feel overwhelming. Like they seamlessly incorporated all those elements of BEST. All right. But before we dive into that very intriguing 30, 60, 90 day plan, because whoa, you mentioned another structure, the PPP approach. We are going to dive into that, that but first. We are going to dive into that, but first. Oh, okay, good. Because I want to hear more about this PPP method. I yeah. feel like this is where things get really interesting, right? Not all career paths are these straight lines. Some of us, we zig and zag a little bit, but that doesn't mean those experiences aren't valuable, right? Absolutely not. And that's where the PPP method really comes in handy. PPP, by the way, stands for past, present, future. Past, present, future. Okay. And it's particularly effective for folks who maybe have had those more diverse career paths, or maybe you're looking to totally transition industries. This mm -hmm. is a good one to have in your back pocket. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense because you're not just trying to erase the past. You're saying, hey... I've learned from every step of my journey, and now I'm here ready to apply those skills to this role. But how do you actually make that work in practice? It feels a little more like nuanced than the BEST method. You're right. It's about strategically framing those experiences to really showcase your growth and ambition. So let's say you're interviewing for a project management role, but your background is actually in event planning. PPT helps bridge that gap. Okay, I'm intrigued. Give me an example. How do you connect those two worlds, event planning and project management? Those seem pretty different on the surface. Exactly. So instead of shying away from your past, you lean into it. Your introduction could sound something like this. Looking back, I honed my organizational and problem-solving skills managing complex events. Okay, so they're not just saying I planned parties. They're talking about the skills they developed. Right, and then you'd continue... This experience ignited a passion for coordinating teams, managing budgets, and ensuring on-time delivery, which is why I'm excited to transition my expertise into a project management role. That's a smooth move. They've seamlessly connected those dots, right? Event planning to project management, highlighting those transferable skills, and they did it without sounding like they were like listing bullet points off their resume. Exactly. It feels natural. Yeah. Now, notice how the present part isn't just about what they're doing right now, but it's their current mindset. They've articulated that this isn't some random job hop. It's a purposeful step in their career trajectory. It shows they've actually put some thought into where they want to go, what they want to do. You know, it's not just about, oh, I need a job. It's I'm trying to build a career here. Exactly. They're being intentional. I like it. And then that brings us to the future part of PPP. And again, it's not just about your goals, but how you align with the company's vision. So to continue our example, looking ahead, I'm excited to contribute to a company that values innovation and efficiency, and I'm eager to learn and grow within a dynamic team environment. So they've gone from like, I want to be a project manager to I want to be your project manager because our values align. That's impressive. It's subtle, but it speaks volumes because they're not just talking about themselves. They're emphasizing their desire for growth within this specific company. They've clearly done their research, they know what this company's about, and they're showing that they're a good fit. Okay, so it's like saying, I'm not just here for a paycheck, I'm invested in our mutual success. That's powerful. Now, before we get too caught up in the past, present, and future, you mentioned career vids had some bonus advice. Something about a 30, 60, 90 day plan that sounds kind of intense. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. While it's not part of, you know, that initial introductory spiel, mentioning that you have a 30, 60, 90 day plan at the end of your introduction, it can be incredibly impactful. Okay, I'm all for a good power move. But break it down for me. What exactly is a 30, 60, 90 day plan? And why is it such a game changer in an interview? Well, imagine you're a hiring manager, right? Yeah. You've probably heard dozens of these introductions, all pretty similar. And then someone walks in and they're like, oh, and by the way, I've already thought about what I'd want to accomplish in my first three months here. Okay, so it shows you're not just there to like clock in and clock out. You're already thinking about making a difference. Exactly. It demonstrates initiative, a proactive mindset. It shows you've done your research, you understand the role, and you've already thought about how your specific skills can contribute from day one. Okay, so it's not just talking the talk, it's walking the walk before you even get the job. Precisely. It's like saying, I'm not waiting for someone to tell me what to do. I'm coming in with a game plan. Okay, I'm sold. But what exactly goes into this magical 30, 60, 90 day plan? What kind of things should people be focusing on? All right, so we've got the roadmap with BEST or PPP. We've got the secret weapon 30, 60, 90 plan up our sleeve. 
But what should we actually be putting in this plan? Well, it should definitely be tailored to, you know, the specific role in the company. But a good kind of starting point is to think in phases. Phases? Okay, I like it. Makes it a little less daunting. Exactly. So for those first 30 days, you really want to focus on learning. Get to know the team, the company culture, familiarize yourself with their processes. It's about, you know, absorbing information like a sponge. So becoming part of the team, not just an outsider trying to like fit yeah, in. Exactly. And then as you move into that 60 day mark, that's when you can start to shifting to applying your skills, mm -hmm. taking on projects and, you know, really showcasing what you bring to the table. So it's not just what you say you can do. It's like, here's the plan of how I'm actually going to do it. Exactly. And then that final 30 days, that's where you're really focusing on the long term growth, maybe identifying areas where you can continue learning, seeking out mentorship opportunities, setting goals for your future at the company. Oh, so it's like saying, hey, I'm not just here for a short stint. I'm actually invested in growing with you long term. Exactly. You're demonstrating that you have vision, that you're committed to mutual success. And the best part is you don't need to get into like minute detail during the interview. Mm -hmm. Just mentioning that you have a plan, that alone shows initiative. And then if they want to know more, you can always elaborate. It's like a little, here's the trailer, now come see the whole movie kind of thing. Exactly. Okay, I like it. Now, I know some folks listening might be thinking, this is a lot. Am I supposed to memorize all of this? This is starting to feel less like job hunting and more like we're building robots. Well, and that's a valid concern, right? We don't want to sound inauthentic. But remember, these structures, they're meant to be guides, not scripts. Okay, so they give you the framework, but you still need to bring yourself to it. Exactly. Don't try to be someone you're not. The key here is authenticity. Let your genuine self shine through. Because I think when you are genuinely excited about an opportunity, it shows. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we've covered the structures, the strategies, the 30, 60, 90 day plan sneak attack. But before we unleash everyone on their next interview, what's like the one thing you want them to remember? If they take nothing else away from this deep dive, what's the key takeaway? You know, that introduce yourself question. It's your chance to really take control of the narrative. Ooh, I like that. Present your most authentic, capable self. Because ultimately, it's about connecting with that interviewer on a human level and getting them excited about the prospect of having you on their team. So it's more than just a resume. It's about telling your story. Exactly. Yeah. And stories, they're powerful, right? They engage us. They stay with us. Yeah. Find that thread that connects your experiences, the challenges you've overcome, the lessons you've learned, and weave them into a narrative that showcases your unique journey. Because at the end of the day, skills and experience are important, but it's also about finding that right fit for you A&D the company. Absolutely. And a genuine, well-crafted introduction can be the key to making that connection. There you have it, folks. Go forth and own those narratives, craft those introductions, practice your storytelling, and don't forget that secret weapon, the 30, 60, 90-day plan. You've got this. Huh? Until next time, happy job hunting.